Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. At the Bluebell Ice Cream Factory. Hey Roamers, we're in Brenham, Texas, halfway between Houston and Austin. We'll visit the birthplace of Texas, check out the Bluebell Ice Cream Factory, tell you where to find some tasty barbecue, and explore some amazing murals in Brenham's historic downtown on this episode of Roaming with Rosie. In 1836, the forces of Mexico's General Santa Ana were raging at the Alamo, and at the same time, the Texas Declaration of Independence from Mexico was signed here, marking the birthplace of the Republic of Texas. This is the Washington on the Brazos State Historic Site. The name Washington on the Brazos was used to distinguish the settlement from Washington on the Potomac, in other words, Washington, D.C. Located on 293 acres of lush parkland, Washington on the Brazos State Historic Site gives visitors a unique insight into the lives and times of the 59 delegates who met here. This structure, Independence Hall, was the meeting room where they drafted a formal Declaration of Independence from Mexico from 1836 to 1846 the Republic of Texas proudly but precariously existed as a separate and unique nation. Washington on the Brazos is indeed where Texas became Texas, a nation that flourished for 10 years before joining the United States of America. While museums and indoor venues here do have admission fees, it's free to stroll the beautiful grounds, walk the trails, and learn some of the history through signage and reenactments. This is the type of weapon that was used in the War of 1812, Texas Revolution. This is more typically a military weapon. Um, not the greatest accuracy because it, it's a smooth bore. We arrived on a beautiful early spring day to enjoy this fairly easy 2.7 mile loop trail. It's great for birding, hiking, or just strolling. Dogs are welcome, but they must be on a leash. Overlooking the historic ferry crossing along the Brazos River, the La Bahia Pecan likely was germinated when a nut dropped from a trader's saddlebags in the early 1800s. DNA testing shows this pecan tree is different from neighboring populations and is related to pecans from Mexico, just a young tree in 1836, when those Texans formally declared independence from Mexico and established the Republic of Texas. The town population soon grew to over a thousand. In 1858, the growing railroad wanted to include Washington on their route, but town leaders and businessmen declined. They thought it would compete with the river transport that stocked their shops with the finest goods from Paris and supplies from all over. So the railroad bypassed them, and by 1900, Washington on the Brazos was no longer. Exactly halfway between Houston and Austin, Texas, you'll find Brenham. And this mural, located downtown, it proclaims the bees of Brenham. It includes baseball, birthplace of Texas, and bluebell ice cream. Although we think they should have included barbecue, but we'll get to that in a minute. A trip to Brenham should include a visit to the Bluebell Creamery and Ice Cream Parlor. In 1907, a group of businessmen here decided to establish the Brenham Creamery Company and make butter from the excess cream brought in by area farmers. A few years later, the creamery began making ice cream 
and delivering it to neighbors by horse and wagon. In 1930, the company changed its name to Bluebell Creameries. By 1958, Bluebell began to focus full-time on making ice cream. If you visit between Monday and Friday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., you get to watch them making your favorite treats from an observation deck. We were some of the many visitors who showed up after hours. Everything was closed, but we fondly remember visiting 10 years ago when our son wasn't taller than us and we ate our share of those $1 scoops. Be sure to grab a free paper bluebell hat to complete the experience. At this point in the day, we were focused on two things. Some of the fantastic public art that has taken hold in Brenham and barbecue. Barbecue was going to come first as it was time to eat. Since we had Dexter, we were looking for a good takeout. We did our due diligence on Google and came up with LJ's Barbecue. They have rave reviews. Their website tells you that they're open at 11 a.m. until sold out or 6 p.m., whichever comes first. On this day, sold out came first. There was none of that delicious brisket to be had by 2 p.m which turned out to be good luck because next on our list was Nathan's. As we approached this gas station and realized the restaurant was attached, we had a deja vu. Well, I guess not actually because the memory was real. This was where we had come 10 years ago as it was highly recommended by Jamie's brother. Nathan's, as in Nathan Winkleman, the big daddy of Texas barbecue, he claims he's been cooking up some of the best true pit barbecue in the state since he was knee high in his grandma's kitchen. You can order your queue through the convenience store attached to the gas station, or you can park in the back and that's where you'll actually find Nathan's main entrance. He started selling his queue 40 years ago with a takeout plate barbecue business in a tiny convenience store in Brenham. Today, Nathan seats up to 100 in-house, 40 on the patio, and caters events throughout South Central Texas. It did not disappoint again, and it was perfect for dining on the patio with Dexter. Good? Mm -hmm. Besides historical buildings still in use today, great food, music, and wildflowers, Brenham is also a destination for public art. This area is becoming known for having beautiful and thought-provoking works of art in the form of murals. Each year, they put on the Texas Arts and Music Festival. Two to three world-renowned and or community muralists are invited to create their art on sides of buildings in downtown during the festival. This form of art has no barriers, which may be why it's becoming so popular. It can help communities come together, increase business and bring tourists to an area, and express messages in a non-violent and creative manner. In Brenham, around many corners, tucked into alleyways and on towering brick walls, you'll discover giant murals that adorn the historic buildings. In just three days during 2017's festival, Jeff Soto painted this three-story tall owl family. A pair of entrancing blue owls looked down from the side of this building at Baylor and Commerce Streets. As a youth, Soto simultaneously discovered both traditional painting and the illegal graffiti. He's created murals around the world as well as artwork for the band Metallica. This retro style painting of a blonde woman and a big red bear is called Lady and the Bear. It was painted by Michael C. Rodriguez and it's located at 210 South Park Street. It reminds me of a cross between Nancy Drew and Betty from the Archie comic books. Rodriguez is based in Houston and loves how public art brings communities together. In 2014, Houston Magazine named Michael one of the six young artists who are reshaping Houston's art scene. Tara Johnston created this stunning mural during the 2020 festival. Keep Growing is 60 feet wide and 18 feet high. The theme behind this mural is growth. It's meant to be a reminder to always keep growing no matter what life throws at you. Although it can be seen from a large part of downtown, it also overlooks the quaint and petite Tubin Park. A state archaeological landmark sits beneath the streets of Brenham, a large system of historic cisterns. The cisterns were built in the late 1800s to store rainwater for public firefighting. Private cisterns were also abundant throughout early Washington County, used for bathing, drinking, and cooking. Self-guided tours through this historic downtown Brenham pocket park called Tubin Park 
can be enjoyed any time of the day. Last year's featured artist was Levi Ponce, a graduate of Cal State University in Northridge, like myself, so I was particularly thrilled to learn more. Ponce's portrait of blues musician Blind Willie Johnson is on Commerce Street. Johnson lived in this area from 1897 until 1945. He was known for his powerful chest voice way of singing. Johnson left behind just 29 recorded songs. He captured the essence of the blues and it's said to have inspired nearly every blues artist since. You can listen to his Dark Was the Night, Cold Was the Ground. We'll put a link in the description. Ponce has said the most important thing is not where his murals take him, but what his murals do for others. Venezuelan-born, Austin-based street artist and muralist Luis Angulo created this beautiful work in what was once a dingy little alley. Blue Bonnet Alley is now an adorable destination for Brenham's art walkers. He said this mural was meant to be. Daniel Angulo is the artist behind this mosaic mural on the side of the ranch interiors building. Daniel travels the globe to create his art, but he also travels to enrich his knowledge of cultures and regions. He says that the murals he creates are his contribution to stop any type of injustice. He also hopes to bring awareness to social, cultural, and political issues. In 2018, the site of the Home Sweet Farm building got an eye-catching mural by world-renowned artist Chad Eaton. Cosmic Armadillos shows a pair of Texas-sized black and white armadillos with an outer space design. Helena Martin created this 50 by 14 foot mural called Love Yourself. It depicts a cardinal swooping past with a yellow rose in its grasp. Her murals can be seen throughout the U.S. and abroad, and she's also an accomplished animator. It's amazing to see how she brings her murals to life on her YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below. This peace sign mural was also created last year at the corner of Commerce and Douglas Street. It was created by Brenham artist and high school art teacher Brooke Trahan with the help of their art club students. They created it with glow-in-the-dark paint. There's free parking all around downtown and links in the description for the maps to the murals as well as artist links. Our visit to this part of Texas is coming to an end. We thoroughly enjoyed our campsite in Belleville and getting to spend so much time exploring this area and visiting with family nearby. Before we embarked on the RV lifestyle, visits came very infrequently. If you do it in Texas, you just tear the tails off. We'd really appreciate it if you'd share this episode with family and friends. And check out our links for our Amazon store for products we use and recommend or just your everyday shopping. We do get a small commission and it does help to offset the cost of producing these videos. Our next stop is the Texas Riviera. Until next time, see ya!